All right, folks, it's Peter Cole, and today is a big day for me. I finally have a new piece of outboard gear, a new piece of analog hardware outboard gear that doesn't exist in my computer. And this is the first piece that I've purchased in, I wanna say, 10, 12 years, which seems crazy. I, I can't believe it's been that long. But uh, yeah, I've been in the box for the last 10 years at least. And I love what in the box gives me, right? If I need to call up a session from a year ago, I, I have all my settings right there. The computer stores it for me. I don't have to remember all the positions of my my EQ and my compressor settings. I, it's all there for me. I need it. I love in the box. Uh, but that being said, I have been curious about introducing some analog warmth into my signal chain and particularly um, in the bus area, in my master bus area or any buses actually for that matter. <laughs> uh, I like the, I love the SSL bus compressor and I use the UAD version of that, which I love. And I love my uh, UAD Poltec EQs. So I had always said to myself, if I could find a good uh, piece of outboard gear that combined it, combined it, is that a word? Combined? That had an SSL type bus compressor with a Poltec style EQ, Wow, I would be all over that. And sure enough, Tegler, I mean, there's other companies as well, but the one that I caught my eye is the Tegler Cream. And there's the original one, which did just that. It combined it, there I go again. It had a SSL bus type compressor with a Poltec EQ. And I said, I want that. And I kept my eyes on it. I didn't pull the trigger for a while. It's definitely not cheap. So I saved up my money and I was getting all excited about it. But then there was the part about, oh, but then, yes, I'm going to put it on my master bus. But every time I go to bring it back up and I'm working on a new session, how am I going to remember all the settings before? And that was something that always annoyed me. And they kind of kept me from, from buying it. And then one day I was on the Internet and I hear about this thing called the Tegler Audio Cream RC. I don't really know what the RC stands for. It's probably written somewhere. Long story short, the RC of the new Tegler Audio Cream allows you to control and store the presets or the, the, the settings, I should say, uh, that you, you do in the hardware world, and it stores it in your, in your session. It, I haven't used it yet, so we're going to uh, discover this together, but it, it's a plugin that you install uh, in your DAW, just like any other plugin, and you control the the hardware through the plugin is, is that freaking amazing it's just insane how awesome that is and it's literally exactly what i wanted i wanted the ssl bus type compression the poltic type eq and i wanted to be able to control it and store those settings within my DAW. i i couldn't believe it when they came out with this these guys are geniuses so here's the box and I want to do a quick unboxing right now, and it won't be as fancy as some of the other ones you see out there on the internet, but I just want to record this moment in time because it's a big deal for me. And then I'll try getting this set up and we'll take a look at what it looks like inside my DAW in action. Let's do it. All right, so I'm super excited to open this thing. I've seen some other unboxings on YouTube, and I know that it comes in a really nice box. That's what they say, that's what, ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. look at this, I can see it right now. See, this is, this is what we're talking about. That's some classy, look at that. The idea is, you know, you can control the knobs, and again, I haven't used this, so I'll find out, but the knobs are controlled obviously through the hardware, but the settings you set here are registered within the plugin that sits in your DAW, so it keeps track of the settings, and it literally physically moves these things around. Every time you load up a new project, it loads up the plugin, it sees what the settings were, and it automatically sets the new uh, settings on the hardware, this device, which is crazy. That is insane. And it's, you know, this is the future, in my opinion, of 
of uh, outboard gear. Like we need this uh, in the, the types of workflows that we have. Um, we work too fast and we don't have time to, to write everything down. Let's set it up. Okay, so now I have it sitting in my rack. Uh, so you can at least see how it looks. And what I need to do now is I'm gonna get an ethernet cable because how it works. And you can see I got the instructions right here. Um, I'm gonna go this route. Uh, without a router, I'm gonna connect the cream directly to my Mac, which is sitting right there. There's the Mac Pro, the fancy Mac Pro. Luckily it has an ethernet input. So I'm gonna come out of the cream and into the uh, ethernet of my Mac. Okay, and just for documentation purposes, you can see there it's coming out of the ethernet. That's how it works. There's the back of the cream and it's going down here. Don't look at any of the wires, please. Let's not pay attention to the wires. And somewhere down there, I've got it plugged into the Mac Pro. All right, I think the next step is to install the plugin and, and then configure my Mac so that it can understand the signals coming from the cream. Let's do it. All right, so now I'm inside Logic. I've set up the cream in that the, there's an ethernet connection as we saw a minute ago that's coming out of that and into my Mac. And um, real quick, I'll bring up my system preferences so you can kind of see what that looks like in the network. There it is, ethernet one, that's the one that's connected to. Um, the instructions that come with the cream tell you to fill all this stuff in, so I filled that in. There's the IP address that it's looking for. And then I installed the plugin, and here it is. Look at that. How cool is that? So this, this is now connected to the hardware device, and when I move a f knob here, the knobs on the hardware device move along with it. They... Um, they because they're motorized, they take a little bit longer to move. Like if I go like this, it's going to take a little while to catch up, but it still does it. And it responds super well. Unbelievable. Love this thing. This is magic. Unbelievable. Uh, and we still haven't even started listening to it yet. Wait till you hear how it sounds. It sounds incredible. Um, one thing I did want to point out is inside of Logic. Uh, where is that again? Oh, yeah my in in out labels so i'm going to bring this up and i'm bringing this up because if you go to your out this is this is this is how um uad sets it up it's really confusing i'm surprised there's not more things on the on the uh, web about this because this was driving me crazy and it took me forever to figure out i guess i'm just stupid because um, i don't see anyone else really having a problem with this but if, when you ins um, insert your your I.O. plugin, and again, this is in Logic, so I can't speak for other DAWs, but in Logic, the way you connect to a hardware, piece of hardware, is through, the, or at least one way to do it, is through this I.O. plugin. So it's literally a plugin on the channel that you want to ins essentially insert that hardware device. So super cool, right? This is like reaching out of Logic, sending a signal into the hardware device, and then coming back all as an insert, super cool. So here's where the weird stuff comes in. What I, ha I have my cream connected to my UAD Apollo 6X, uh, which has multiple um, inputs and outputs, thankfully. Um, and I have them uh, connected through input three and four and output three and four. And so the first thing you might be looking at is why does this say output five and six? And that is exactly what was driving me crazy. And that is because what uh, Logic sees is five and six, but the label um, that UAD is looking at is three and four. I don't know if that made any sense, but <laughs> what I figured out was if I switch this to three and four, then it's looking at one and two, so it, it doesn't work. So I have to switch this to five and six, and then that matches up with three and four, which is what UAD, um, which is what I'm using through the UAD interface, right? Because I have my cream plugged in through three and four, or in this case, it's the output. So it's the output that it's coming out of. And I, I put a, my own custom label in there just so I wouldn't forget, but this, I guess I'm just stupid because I don't see a lot of people talking about this on the web. Must, 
must have been easier for other people to figure out. Anyway, keep an eye on that. Make sure you get that set up right or it won't work. So now I have it looking like that, which looks kind of bizarre, of course. And then I do a ping just to detect any latency between the outboard cream and logic. And let's give it a sa uh, uh, listen. Hopefully this is going to be translated well through, um, through the devices here because it sounds great in my studio. So I'm going to bypass it. And you know, to be honest, there's probably a little bit of level difference there. Maybe I'll, I'm gonna, no, I'll turn it back on. I mean, the, the low end of this thing is just unreal. Give an idea, especially I wanted you to hear the bass content. So I'm going to mute it again. I mean, it's just night and day. Hopefully you can hear that over the video. The compressor is so powerful. Um, you know, I'm going to crank it up a bit and you see the uh, compression happening there. It's pretty heavy. So this is something I keep an eye on depending on Again, I just got this a day ago, so I don't have a lot of experience yet. But um, in general, I like to, to not over compress things. And because the cream is mostly, at least for my purposes, going to be used as a final mix bus compressor, <clears throat> mostly for some polish and final, um, uh, you know, compression and, and, and uh, EQ basically on the master. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be over cranking the compressor that often. But... So yeah, I'm I'm super happy with my uh, my Tegler cream. I mean, it sounds fantastic. Um, it was relatively easy to set up. It's you know it's different. You, you don't have uh, these kind of arrangements with with a hard uh, hardware piece of hardware connected through your computer through Ethernet and then a plug in that connects to that. So it took a little bit of getting used to, and uh, there was a couple of things that. I struggled with but all in all it was fairly simple and, it, and it's solid it works so this is just again a, a quick intro uh video and um mostly just wanted to share my excitement and finally having a piece of outboard gear um, especially as nice as this i will do a lot more um, work with this over the coming weeks and months of course and hopefully maybe there'll be a follow-up at some point where i dig a lot deeper into the overall sound and how i'm using it on my on my uh, mixes. So thanks again for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.